Okay, now for question number five from P1, June 2019, International A-Level um, Part A, we're asked to find, using algebra, all the real solutions of this equation, 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 35x equals 0. So this is an, a, cubic, a cubic equation, but in P1, we're not required to... Um, <coughs> solve using any other method apart from like factorizing okay cubic expressions there will always be a common factor of um, x you'll find in all the terms in p1 so we can take out that common factor you can see x is in all three terms so if you take out that common factor you have x times 2x squared plus 3x minus 35 equals 0 so straight away we can say one of the solutions to this is x equals 0 and the other solution will be found, the solution will be found by using 2x squared plus 3x minus 35 equals 0. So now, this is a quadratic equation. Now, you can't just put this into your calculator and write down the answers. You have to show that you have factorized it or used completing the square or used the quadratic formula. Okay, um, it seems like you should be able to factorize this because the question normally they would say uh, find all real solutions in exact form there's something like that or decimal places or something if there's something which cannot be um, factorized and it'll give you something which in third form there will be normally you'll see the word exact in in the wording of the question or decimal places or something so here i'm pretty certain we can factorize it so let's try to factorize it Okay, there's ways you can do it from your calculator and work backwards in order to make the examiner think that you factorize it, but I don't really think you should resort to that unless you're really desperate. So let's just do it properly. Okay, so you've got 2x squared minus 35. Let me just uh, move all this along a bit here. Okay, so now... I like to factorize using this method. There's lots of different methods. This is called the, I call it the window method. So I write, I draw a grid with four four spaces, and I write on the top left hand corner I write two x squared. On the bottom right hand corner I write minus thirty five. So the x squared term here and the constant term in this diagonal cross. Now <clears throat> I know that um, these two numbers multiplied will always give me the same as these two numbers multiplied. So I'm looking for these two numbers to have a product of negative 70 x squared okay so these two numbers must multiply to give you the same as those two numbers with the same sign and i know the sum of these two numbers must give me the middle term here which is plus 3x so of course one of these numbers is positive and one of them is negative because i have a, a negative product and i know that when i multiply these numbers i get minus 70 x squared when i add them i get plus 3 now 70 and 3 I see I can see 10 and 7 like 10 times x and 7 times x if the 10 is positive and the 7 is negative when I add them I get plus 3x and I multiply them I get minus 70x squared so it must be minus 7x here and plus 10x over here so now what I can do is I can take out the common factor from these two terms and write it over here so 2 and 10 common factor is 2 x squared and x common factor is x i'll do the same for these two well the number there's no com nothing common but from the x's you've got x common from x squared and x then what i do is i say okay this point this this um number that goes here is the number that i have to multiply 2x to give me 10x 2x times plus 5 gives me 10x and x times something gives you minus 7x well that's minus 7 so now I have my two factors, x plus 5 and 2x minus 7. So I'll have x plus 5 times 2x minus 7 equals 0. So now I can say either x plus 5 is 0 or 2x minus 7 is 0. That means x is negative 5 or x is equal to 7 over 2. So there I have my three solutions to this equation okay so that's part a 
Part B says, hence find all real solutions of. Okay, hence. Okay, now the word hence basically means using what you have done previously. And hence, if it's given in this form, it says, hence, without the word otherwise, sometimes it says, hence or otherwise, find all real solutions of. In that case, you have a choice to either use what we did before or to go and solve it in some other way. Now, normally, even if it does say, say otherwise, normally the word hence, okay, using what you did before is normally the thing which is the easier thing to do. And when you see the word hence, there will always be some sort of connection between what you're given and what you did before. So that's what you should do. Whenever you see the hence, try to look at what was done previously and what you have to solve now. So in this case, look for the similarities. I can see you got 2 times something plus 3 times something minus 35 times something. And here you have 2 times something plus 3 times something minus 35 times something. Both of them say equal 0. So there's some kind of connection you can see already. And you think about here, x squared and x. So if you think, let's say the x and the y minus 5 squared, you can kind of say, okay, let's look at those. Those are in the same position in these two equations. All right, and the x squared and the y minus 5 to the power 4. Well, we can see a connection straight away that if I square x, I get x squared. If I square y minus 5 to the power of 2, I get y minus 5 to the power of 4. So this is the square of that. And you've got the x cubed multiplied by the 2. And here you've got y minus 5 to the power of 6 multiplied by the 2. And thinking about this again, if I cube the x, I get x cubed. If I cube y minus 5 squared, remember if you cube minus y minus 5 squared, if I cube all of that, I'm going to get y minus 5 to the power of 6. So the connection is basically quite clear here, all right? That this is... This, this is the square of this, and this is the cube of that, just like these are. So if I say, let x be y minus 5 squared, okay, then basically these are connected together. I can think of this as x, right? So we've got our values of x as, what were they? 0, minus 5, and 7 over 2. So let's just get another page. We, we found, oops, not space there. I think I've started on the wrong page here, no problem. We'll just continue down here. So x um, is y minus 5 squared. So we know that x is equal to y minus 5 all squared. All right. So what we can do here is we can say, all right, we've got our three solutions for x, which were 0. Okay, so we, we can say that either y minus 5 squared equals 0. Okay, if I take the square root of both sides, I'll have y minus 5 equals 0. Square root of 0 is 0. And so y equals 5. So that's one of the solutions. Then we have y minus 5 squared equals minus 5. Equals minus 5. Now if I take the square root of both sides here, y minus 5 is equal to plus or minus the square root of minus 5. Okay, we can say that this is undefined. Okay, no, no real solutions. Undefined, because you can't find the square root of a negative number, so there's no real solutions to this particular part. No real solution. Okay, to this particular part. And then we have y minus 5 squared equals... Seven over two. Okay, so y minus five is equal to plus or minus the square root of seven over two. And we can continue on. I'll just use the space down here. Okay, so you have y minus five or y equals 5 plus or minus. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rationalize this denominator. It's always best to rationalize the denominators um, to write things in the simplest form. So I'm going to multiply 
both top and bottom. Remember, this is like root 7 over root 2. And if I multiply both the numerator and the denominator by root 2, then the denominator will become rationalized. So you have y equals 5 plus or minus. Now that's root 14 over 2. So it's like a half times root 14. Okay, so there we have the answer. And the answer, so y equals 5. And y equals 5 plus or minus a half times root 14 are the solutions to this particular equation. So whenever you see the word hence, always look for connection between uh, the question and the previous part. Okay? And always remember that even if it says hence or otherwise, normally using what you did before is normally easier. Okay? In this case, you don't really have a choice because it says hence. So you have to use what happened before. And if you try to do otherwise, it would be really complicated because you've got these big brackets, the power of six and all that. Okay, So there we have the answer to that question.